All right, everybody, we have a special playoff edition, a pre-ALDS edition of Locked on Astros. I got Ryan Stanek, the flamethrowing relief pitcher. This guy set a regular season record for ERA for a relief pitcher in Astros history. He has been on the show before, and we wanted to talk to him as he gets ready to face the Seattle Mariners. So let's check this out on the special edition of Locked on Astros right now. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we are your daily Astros podcast. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find the show at Locked On Astros on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Um, And hey, um, Mr. Stanek, where can they find you on social media? Um, I think my both my Instagram and my Twitter are uh, 55. I think both of them are. Not 100% sure. I have to, I have Definitely. To make sure. No, it's all good. It's uh, I know it's rstanic underscore fifty five, and it looks like your Instagram is rstanic underscore fifty five. So there you go. That is consistent. I like that. Yeah. A man with a routine. Imagine that. A <laughs> a a relief pitcher with a routine. So tell me, after this twenty twenty two season, let's reflect back. You became the all-time ERA season leader for regular season relief pitcher with a 1.15 ERA. You amassed 62 strikeouts and one save in 59 appearances in a 2-1 record. How good was this year for you? I mean, it was a good year. Like, uh, uh, I can't really argue with, with uh, like, what happened, like, well, well. Um, Obviously, being in the bullpen, I like as I've, I've made this comment. You have to have, have a little good fortune in the bullpen for for, for like things to go right and, and whatever. And leave guys on and have some help help behind you. Yeah, just like just things like that. Like like well had had some success, but also like being a reliever is fickle and I guess uh, good good fortune on your side definitely definitely doesn't hurt. It helps. Help, it, it can help you trend the right direction. No, yeah, definitely. And I know when you, I mean, if you look at your game logs, when you started off in the season, you had a few times you got, you gave a hit here, two or three hits there. But man, you went on a scoreless inning streak. You were really a part of a bullpen that really anchored this ball club. And with with the coming back of Justin Verlander, with Lance McCullers coming in late in the season, with Framber having the amazing season, Sometimes you have teams that will have a starting pitching staff that does a great job, but then the relief pitching kind of is eh, a little bit, but you guys have really held it down. What has been one of the keys to this cohesive relief pitching unit in 2022? I think it's like kind of like the next man up mindset, like like pass the baton, like do your job that you know is, is, is going to, going to pick you up. You know what I mean? I think I think that everyone in the bullpen, one through eight, full of closing out a game, is more than capable of getting you out of a jam. Whether it be whether it's your your runs, a starter's runs, another reliever's runs, it doesn't matter. Like it's in everybody that comes in behind you or behind another guy that they're going to get the job. The, the confidence that the group has this season has been good. But obviously, like, like I think the group is just very steady as a, a lot of veterans. There's even, even the young guys, like, have been kind of thrown into the fire. So they're, they're tested. So, like, I think, I think it's been just a reliability thing. It's like you, you rely on uh the rest of the group so they know that if they're in trouble the next guy's gonna pick them up which is in the bullpen exactly you know that is that is what i love to hear and that really is 
has been the mantra and has been the clubhouse culture that the Astros have created. Because I know when they brought you in, you and I had talked about um, before about your relief pitching when you started. Um, what would you say personally is your highlight or something that you remember that happened in the season? And it could be something you did when you were out there or something that happened in the game. Is there, is there anything you can point to as a, you know what, I'm going to remember this game? I mean, I think the one that stands that I didn't even pitch in, it's, 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 it was the combined you know, hitter that we threw, like, like a special moment. Like, just, just being able to see the – to lock some – like, lock a, a lineup down in a situation like that. Like, it's, it's, it's a cool accomplishment. But, like, you just saw what like, people love, and that's – it's, it's just such a strong. It's just, just such a strong point in the group, and, and it just it was just a special moment for the squad as a whole. Yeah, and and that's what's great, and that's what I notice about this team is that you guys celebrate other people's successes. Of course, as a pitcher in the bullpen, you're like, man, if I get in there, I I gotta, you know, the the pressure seems to be on in those situations. And what I like about that when I talk about pressure is let's say someone like a starter like Urquidy maybe starts out rough or Garcia, you know, has a rough start. We had a lot of pitchers in the first and second inning would kind of start out rough, but they would never panic. How how key is that for the relief pitching core when you're, let's say your starting pitcher gives up a few runs, puts a few crooked numbers on the scoreboard, but you see that they don't get unraveled. Does that help the the relief pitcher's confidence and even maybe some of the more young relief relief pitchers when y'all are having to go out after them? I don't, I don't know if, if what a starter does like will affect my mindset. I think, I think it's just, it's, it's just it's such honestly like that they're all right. Well, bad inning, suck it up, get back to work. And then they like, then they, you, they lock it in and get kind of settled in and, and then them doing thing and going three, and the bullpen has to cover six. You're like, I've had a great day, but they still got us into the sixth to where the third, three and two thirds, and like manageable workloads. Like the starters, the starters, like even out there and shove, still eight innings to, to the point where we get ourselves out there and, and, and put us at a, at a disadvantage. I think the ability, like their ability to like minimize damage and throughout the year has been such a, such a, is a testament to them and how it's been throughout the course of the season. Yeah, I agree with that. And the, you would think like, I mean, this club, Ryan, it, it has been so fun to watch because you essentially have seven starting pitchers, four of them that could be aces on just about any club. And relief pitchers like yourself, like Matan, like Nerys, like Montero, you guys have put in different situations. You've put it you've been you've been in that safe situation. You're you've been the late inning guy. We've seen Montero take that role. And then you have this rookie, Hunter Brown come up and come up and be not only a stellar starter, but a stellar bullpen. What has it been like having a rookie flamethrower like that? And is it good to sometimes have young blood to come up at the end of the season? Does that reinvigorate you as a veteran? Not that you guys needed any pushing, but what is that like bringing a kid in that comes in and performs top of his game? I this, this stuff has never been a question. And obviously, like like the stuff is is, is and it's very, very impressive. And I think him coming in, being composed, uh, he's he's learning a lot, like about how to, to pitch out of the bullpen because we're leaving. Neither is easy, and they're very, very, very different. So addition effectively into the bullpen and, and get ready quickly. Be able to be able to like compose yourself mentally, pitching in situations that aren't, aren't clean and. Not a lot of the times, like I feel like, like a big separation is is 
as a starter, like you're in, you've gotten yourself into it. So you're like, all right, well, this is my situation. This is my, my job to get out. And then as a reliever, a lot of times you get thrown into a mess and you're like, well, so like, I need to like be on my game because you never want to give up anybody else's runs. So you're sitting there reevaluating like thought process and re about your your ability to maintain composure and, and your calmness and and situations so but he, he's done a really really good job of preparing himself and asking questions and trying to learn what he need, needs to learn and and making adjustments um because he, he wants to be good he wants like to win so i think it's just it just shows like the nature of what he, he as a competitor and as a teammate like he want he wants to do well so like like you can it's been pretty impressive he's he's a good kid and definitely excited to see what he can do yeah definitely i w- i was going to ask you this because i was i was thinking about this there was a there was a game and i can't remember if it was in seattle or chicago and you you were in the bullpen, and um, they 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 didn't use you. And I remember putting the question on Twitter: Why didn't we put Stanek in? And I can't remember what I literally can't remember the specific, but I remember um, Dusty Baker talking afterwards and talking about it was like the game before. He said, "Well, he had heated up once or twice," and I had heard that, and I was like, "Can you explain to me and explain to the fans, like as a relief pitcher?" When you get told, okay, warm up, okay, you're not warming up, warm up. What, like, how does that affect you? Because it seems like there are th- different things that you guys do or don't do that we don't understand. Like, well, why didn't they use him? Well, he had heated up once or twice. What is that process like? I mean, can you condense something like that and help us understand a little behind the scenes on that? Yeah, I think that's that's one thing that gets that gets missed in in the is like the the question of like why didn't well why didn't you use him why didn't you use him or and it's like well when as a reliever you get hot like you get you get one you're gonna go in and likely for i don't know the the fourth hitter i have three hitters to get fully going fully ready to pitch like game and then okay one two three inning and you're like okay Okay, well, cool. He's going to go back out. Going to face, likely with runners on base, isn't going to have anybody on base. So you're like, you got fully your A bolts, like your best bolts to get ready for the game. So I know it is an appearance or whatever, but like you pitch that day. And like the physical toll, sit down and then like, okay, let's say two innings later, they're like, oh, we need you for that. And, but you're like, okay, cool. You get ready again. You're like, well, I basically need a full inning separating the two. But then you don't pitch. So you're like, well, I pit. I basically twice. But you didn't because there's no game. And that that you can get in the bullpen at times can be crazy. The ability for, or like the, I guess the ability of, Dusty and John, like, hey, he may not have pitched in the game, but he, like, like, that's a ton of effort. That's a ton of, like, adrenaline. That's all that that stuff. I think, I think that gets lost because, like, I I know fans, robots, and should pitch every day, but, like, (laughs) they, they forget that, like, we're people game and, like, mentally, it's ta- it's mentally and physically taxing, and also like it becomes da- damaging. And you would ra- rather, in our situation tonight, work with bullpen. But like in other situations, if you don't, if you only have two or three reliable guys, like then like, like that can take a toll physically. And if you if you keep running those guys out there and they get hurt instead of three, and then those two guys get crushed, and then they get hurt. hurt. Like it, it's it's just a domino. People don't realize that, that workload matters, and especially with the type of 
stuff and velocity and toll that like a lot of it on their bodies like to generate the force and everything that it takes to the shapes or the, the velocity and whatever like isn't isn't well known. It's like, oh it's just throwing a baseball it's but like it's physically taxing and been a big plus for for the bullpen and and the staff like working like hey i pitched yesterday i warmed up twice today i need a day, a day because physically if you want me to be good the next day yes you could probably pitch would you be effective maybe or you might be but then you get that day then the next day you're ready to go and everything's good isn't realized but is a very real part of of life and managing those type of things yeah exactly no and and that's really what i thought of course i wouldn't have known all that without asking you and and that's why i ask because you 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 see twitter twitter you know fans all the time you know it's like why aren't they you know if I got paid that much money, I'd be out there on the mound every day. And I'm like, well, I don't think you really understand the process. I mean, you guys aren't little leaguers, A. This isn't MLB The Show. Like, you can't just pop one of those, like, power-ups, like on MLB The Show, go, oh, your reliever's tired, so let's give a power-up, and then we'll let him pitch this game. And that's what I assumed it was something like that, especially with you, your role, and as specialized as it is, like you said, you, you're not going to risk injury, especially in a 162-game season, because nothing was ever that desperate anyways. Now, you guys ended with a pretty big lead. When you guys became the front runners, did the mindset ever change, or was it always day in and day out, we've got to win no matter how far in front of these guys we are? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think for us, it's like we go out there to win every day. But we're realistic and know that like over the course of a 162 games you're not winning possible it'll never be done but like in some aspects you're sitting there going like we're every day we're gonna go out there and compete we're going to try to win every day like something it just what like whatever like but i think our thought is i don't know i don't like one game in april or june Lost us a day in October. If you're in a situation and you're trying, to, you need to get a guy a, a rest day. Like, I don't know, in, in the situation, if Tuve had played 15 days, and you're like, well, well, we could play him 16. Well, we should probably give him a day because if a little bit banged up, like he's like, I, like like obviously this is just an example if somebody's banged up you're not going to run them out right. or, or injury or risk something bigger happening give, give them the day and okay miss out on him being in the lineup but you'd rather have, have him healthy than like run him out there and get him hurt in in june and and if he gets if some if he gets seriously hurt and you miss him in october <laughs> like as a fan would October than if you missed him in June for a day, like yeah. And I, I, like I don't. I think they see the forest but don't see the trees. Kind of mindset. They only see the trees and miss out on the forest. They're looking at such a small picture and day in and day out. And as a player, you get kind of you see your daily routine. You see, you get locked in on the trees, and then and once you take a step, a bigger, broader picture, you're like, oh, that makes way more sense. And it should make not many people are capable as a fan to like step back and go, well, this game better as much as, let's say, the first game, this first game of the. So I think that kind of shapes into a lot of it. Yeah, definitely. I, I really appreciate your time today, um, Ryan. It has been so fun to watch you. It has been so fun to watch this ball club. And I know Astros fans are just, we are just 
Like we're white knuckling. Like when is the start time? When is the start time? It's probably going to be an afternoon game, but just know that locked on Astros has y'all's back. We're going to be, we're going to try to be at every home playoff game that we can. I know we're going to be at um, both um, the first two ALDS games. And like I said before, I'm not going to ask y'all about strategy or anything like that, but um, is there, is there anything you want to say to the fans? Just maybe a thank you for their support, you know, you know, for the regular season before we wrap up here. Yeah, yeah, of course. The fans, the fans were great, great. All bunches and were always loud. And last, last year in the playoffs, they were crazy loud. And that atmosphere again this year, like, like what they, what they bring to the yard special and, and the play, players notice and they appreciate it. And yeah, for for uh, first couple games, well, all the games, but first couple in particular. Yeah, definitely. And you know, just hey, you know what? Go out there and get them one game at a time. Let's just focus on game one. Let's not focus on anything after that. Give it a hundred and fifty thousand percent, like you guys have done all year. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day after your workout, before you go hang out with the family. And I really hope that we're able to have you back. And I really hope that in the future, we have some really good things to talk about from the postseason because I'm out of the predicting game. This is my mantra. If the Astros do what the Astros do, I'm not worried about the results. So <laughs> that is all we got. Mr. Stanek, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the playoffs. Go strike them out. Go get pumped up. Mm-hmm. We want to see that hair flowing. We want to see that 100-mile-an-hour pitch going across the plate and those bats being missed. And go Astros, as always. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. This is Locked on Astros. He is Ryan Stanek. He's the man. Go check him out. If you haven't gotten your tickets, go to simpleseats.com. That's right. Simple Seats is locally owned. There's no ticket fees. You can go there. They are not going to add 20% to your to your tickets. You go there, you use Locked On 10, you get $10 off your first $50 purchase or more. And tell them that the guys at Locked On Astros sent you. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. Y'all have a great Sunday and a great week, and go Strohs.